Hi guys, my name is Lieutenant Dan Yoder, Frederick County Fire Mar or Frederick County Fire Department. I was in the Fire Marshal's office. I'm now in, the, in the field operations. Today, we're going to talk about something pretty near and dear to me, and it, and it, and it comes down to four questions. And as I go through this, uh, the questions will pop up, but I'll throw them out here uh, at, at the beginning. Uh, this is what I like to call the zookeeper. Kind of, I wanted to keep this talk lighthearted, but yet to a serious message at the same time. And that is, the serious message is taking care of our own. So, the zookeeper. In, in Frederick County, the way we do business doesn't mean it's right, wrong, or indifferent. It just happens to fit. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. We get five, two, and one on a, on a, on a box alarm. Five engines, two trucks, and a, and a uh, rescue squad. Pretty much, let's just say everybody's in quarters and we're doing, doing what we're supposed to do. That's three people each on the rig. Sometimes we have to flip-flop back and forth on rigs, but hey, that's just the nature of the beast. So, primarily today, I'm looking at number three engine. Number three en engine is the beginning of the RIT operation. They are laying the groundwork for the four questions that I like to ask, and that is, who are they, where are they, what are they doing, and have conditions changed since they have arrived? So, we'll go through all of this uh, slide by slide, but those, that's the crux of what, I, what, what, what my, my talk is, those four questions. I would love to take credit for all of that, but I can't. That some of this has all been brought to me by a very familiar name in the fire service that, that taught a class of approximately 20 years ago that I took, incident safety officer, and that was Chief Dennis Rubin. We had the opportunity to sit and talk. I was his driver for a day when he came to Pennsylvania. Uh, outstanding guy, good, good to go listen to, has a, has a great insight. So he, he kind of brought up some of the, uh, some of the questions, and, I, and I, I, I've adapted those to the Frederick County way of doing business. Uh, this, these, these two rigs here, that's not our front line in, 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 in Frederick County, Maryland, please believe me. I grew up in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Those, those rigs were like two houses away from me. So I was basically at the firehouse all the time, hanging out with those guys. It was an all-career department. And, and a lot of those guys were the World War II veterans, gee, we can get it done mentality. And that's what I learned from a lot of those guys. So, the first rig, as I put out there, engine 122, that's what I'm on. Again, those are not what we have. Uh, we run Pierce. For, engine 122 is actually a, a 2006 Pierce. I would love to buy an old rig like that, so that's why I put that up there. It was provided to me by an, a longtime friend, Earl Musselman. So, engine 122, who are they? We know who they are. So as I go through this, I'm pr primarily concerned with the first engine, the second engine, and the first truck. Because I'm number three engine, I'm RIT. I need to get something started on those four questions. So who are they? It's engine 122. We're first due, we are the attack group. So as I, that, that is, <laughs> that's my house in the summer. That's my house uh, back in the winter when we had the 36 inches of snow. So same house, certainly you, you're going to be impacted on getting in and out of that place in, in some way, shape, or form. And I'll, and I'll show you what I mean by that a little bit later. So where are they? Well, they're on number two floor. Now we remember, engine 122 went to number two floor for a fire, alpha quadrant. We split the, we split the house in quadrants, floors and quadrants. So we call out where we're working in that particular quadrant. So if something goes wrong, A, we have a better idea where you're at. Two, that gives my driver a chance to throw a ladder into that particular quadrant. So if we need to get out right away. And it, sometimes our drivers are totally dressed out. Sometimes our drivers are not. If he needs to get up on that, on that uh, alpha quadrant, get the windows out real quick while we're making our attack up the, up the, up the interior stairs, if you know, no fire showing based on, uh, on the NIST operations. 
and UL operations, just heavy smoke. We're trying to get that coordination going right there. Three people, that's all we have. It's not getting any better. So we get a, I, do, I get off, do a real quick walk around the house. I want to pay particular attention to this side. I want to pay particular attention to Charlie's side because as I'm doing my walk around, I may have a 3068 man door that comes out of the lower, the, the, the basement door. If they're going to the basement, I know they have a secondary way out. I need to call that right away and let folks know that. If in fact, uh, you have a deck, maybe you have a sliding glass door on there, great. You may have a deck, or I'm sorry, you may have a sliding glass door with no stairs, no deck. That's a fall hazard. So you see why Charlie's side is vitally important. So let me back up here. Again, we're, we're here at, at my house. Where are they so far? Who are they? Engine 122. What are, what are they doing? They are fire attack number two, or I'm sorry, where are they at? Uh, number two floor, Alpha Quadrant. So I move on a little bit. What are they doing? Well, we've seen this gentleman's pictures before. Very, very appropriate. Who needs to study fire behavior and tactics? I've watched the movie Backdraft like a hundred times. We've got this. I'm not much on the, on the movie. But I look and I, I, I take that last, those last three words. We've got this. We've all said it. So now I know the folks are on number two floor. They are attacked. This is still engine 122. They are doing the fire attack. And how often have we been outside as some sort of a command officer, whatever level that may be, looking in where folks are looking out and they're saying they're making progress, and we're saying, no, you're not. We have the volume, pressure, density, color. It's, it's pushing hard. Oh, man, we got this. We're inside doing good. My vantage point outside, no, you're not. So we need, again, to have that good communication, letting folks know what's going on. So we have one engine company working, number two floor, two members. Have conditions changed they can, since the arrival? Well. And I'm going to tie all this together. It could change on the smoke, the fire spread, the bag, bag it. Where's the fire been at, going, and initial tactics. Something very, very good to remember as that writ officer. Wind direction. Unfortunately, a number of years ago, well, let's say about four or five years ago, a gentleman, uh, a county that borders us on our southern border, had a, fi a, a firefighter was killed, line of duty death, wind change wind-driven fires. We need to be aware of it. NIST UL doing, has done great studies with that. So again, we need to be aware of this. Building construction. To me, building construction is the underpinning of what you do every day. We need to know where the fire is, where it's going, how it's going to react, yes. But if you do not know how the building is built, what type of construction, where are your void spaces, Rules of thumb, number three, number three style construction. A lot of it gets rehabbed, void spaces, different places. Mom and pop, uh, mom and pop grocery on number one floor, number two, number three floor, the taxpayer, they have apartments on them. Over the years, different occupancies. What happens? Some folks make their own, own changes internally, don't really tell a lot of people about it. That's going to impact us at the most unopportune time. So what has changed? I, I, I left one out there, my apologies, is certainly a water supply issue. Is it a downtown area where you have water? Or are you gonna have to truck water in? That is absolutely a different way of doing business. So those are the basic four questions that we were going through. Well now, let's, let's put this up a little bit more, ramp it up a little bit more. Another engine company arrives, number two engine. This is all the way Frederick County does business. Does may right or wrong, it may work, may not work for, some, for everyone. Number two engine, they are the backup for the, for the initial attack engine. Whether it's the two in, two out, or somebody says, hey, get in there and back them up, that's fine. Two in, or number two engine backs up number one. So again, we need to know where they're going. First, to truck, first, the first two truck arrives, search, Rescue, ladders, VEIS, whatever task you're asked ask to do, that's what you need to do. So you say, well, this guy's got to tie this together. I will, because I, I just arrived. 
Number three engine. What am I to do? I look there. I know what my writ, my, I know what my writ guidelines say to do, but how am I going to do it? I need to know where are they at after I do a 360. I do a real quick 360, get the lay of the land. I'm looking for civilian exit points. That first engine can, can mostly check for the civilian exit point where they go in. There's more than one. You may have, at least we do in uh, older style uh, dwellings downtown, we have what's called a delta door or a, uh, a bravo door. And those doors are on those sides of the, of the dwelling. And they may lead up a couple of steps into a kitchen. They may lead down to a basement. It's just another access point. Well, civilians are going to try to get out any way they can. Things go wrong, our guys will try to get out any way they can. We need to be able to check those. So as the third, number three engine, writ officer, I need to do a 360, look at those special points that jump out at me, and say, this is what I need to remember. Then I find out who are they, where are they, what are they doing, and have conditions changed since, since even I have done my 360. Certainly things may change since the first arriving engine. You may, be, you, you may get good, good white smoke coming out where they went in. Hey, sounds good to me. Looks like we're making a, a good hit on it. But the big thing is we need to remember where those people are. Plug them into the, the, the command board where they are. So if things do go astray, we can say number one, number two engine, second floor, alpha quadrant, they're backing each other, uh, number two's backing up one. We have how many people? Our case, four people. Two from the first engine, two from the second engine, because the pump operators are outside. Or they're helping to throw the ladders, but we know that they're not in, in the hot zone. And the last portion of that is data provide, provided to the incident safety officer. In our world, we have an incident safety officer on every structure box. We have a battalion chief and coming along with that is an ambulance or a paramedic unit. So you couple all that together, when that safety officer arrives, it's like, wow, what's going on? He needs someone to talk to. That's where the writ officer comes in. We then, as the writ officer, and, and I actually act in both positions, either the safety or the, the, the writ officer, I'm going to approach the, the, the safety officer. All right, this is what we have. I did my 360. These are the companies that are operating on the interior. All right, let's take another walk around the building. So we walk back around my, my house again. That way the safety officer gets, an eye, gets eyes on all four sides. Safety officer goes to command. I then go back to my company as the writ officer, and we start assembling more of our equipment to get the job done. Is that clear as mud? It's kind of what we do. It does work. Now, keep in mind, we have another task force coming in the rear, two more engines and a truck. So number four engine brings a secondary water supply in and takes the floor above. The second truck, they, they most, most of the time fall on number four engine. Number five engine, if not immediately assigned, goes to the command post as the command post company for reassignment. And the trucks, are, or I'm sorry, the rescue squad is a free radical. You put them in, you plug them in where you need them. They very well may get attached to the writ assignment with number three engine. That would give us six to get our job done. Uh, then if we have a, if, if it's a true working fire, then we get a writ, a writ dispatch or another engine, another truck, paramedic unit, EMS supervisor, battalion chief, and on-duty deputy chief. So we have a lot of people coming. It may take a little time for everybody to get there because our county is, is approximately 684 square miles. So it's some of the places, if you're the safety officer, I can literally drive 30, 35 miles one way just to get, just to, get to a call. So we need this, 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 we need the layering. We need the accountability layering of who are they, where are they, what are they doing, and have conditions changed. Because we're such a large geographic area, and we have city, we have a city of about 70, 80,000 people. 
The rest of the county would make up, our total makeup in the county is around 235, 245,000 people. So we need this layering to assist us in keeping our folks safe. We do have a, it's a combination system. We, we then trying to keep people in, so we know where everyone is, working on a program, policy if you will, to, to when a volunteer shows up, how are we gonna keep track of them? Well, we, we have our tags that we put on, uh, we have our dead tags that we carry, we take them off, we walk over to, the, to, to wherever the assembly point is, let's say everybody drops their tags off at the first due engine. As you walk up, you, pay, you take your crew, crew off, you put it on Velcro, and then EMS folks will then take all of this, assemble it back at the command structure, or the, at, the, at the command board with the battalion chief. So it sounds like an interesting ballet. For the most part, it comes together okay. Sometimes time is not on our, our, our side as far as, as getting to the call. Something that certainly impacts us in the east is, and I'll kind of back up here and show you the Yoder camp, right, uh, center point, right there. That backs us up. We had this 36 inches of snow. We went, we tried to stay up most of the night. We were running some calls. There was a period of downtime. We put the, the station doors up. We couldn't move one piece of apparatus. It didn't matter what was going on. It didn't matter if the house across the street was on fire. We're going to have to hand jack line out, out of the fire station because we couldn't move apparatus. We had pretty much every fire station look like that when they put their apparatus doors up. It took a lot of coordination that day and a number of days to get, to get this all gone. I, I don't even like to say the word. It's called snow. And I don't even like to see it. I never want to see it again. And uh, that's why I like the warm weather. But you can see that this here would certainly impact even folks getting there. So let's say that if I back up again, let's say that these, these poor guys, they make it there. Okay, because it was like right across the street from their firehouse. Normally it's six minutes till somebody's going to get to help us. We kind of like that because it's six minutes for us to get started, to play, whatever you want to do. Well, if, if you're sitting in a situation like this, your six minutes may have went to 36 minutes. So now you're on your own. But all things being equal, the, the layering of number one, number two engine, number three truck going to work, the... Uh, writ officer gaining control of where they're at, what's going on, being able to provide that information is vital to, to the, uh, the operation getting started. Gentlemen, I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank everyone for, for uh, attending and especially Michael for, for extending an, uh, an opportunity. This is, is fantastic. We're in a room of smart minds here. So thank you very much.